Glory, 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 glory. Welcome. This is Dr. Ngosina Timalulek, and we are continuing with our series in Christ. This is our discipleship master class. Glory to the Father. We are reading through Ephesians chapter 2, and we are continuing from verse 11. Verse 10 made us to be aware of the fact that we are created in Christ Jesus as God's own handiwork. We are created in Christ Jesus as God's workmanship, created for good works. These good works are to the pleasure and the will of the Father. We contribute nothing. Then Paul comes in from verse 11 and he says, Therefore, remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, a circumcision that is done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship in Israel. And you were foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Without hope and without God in the world. He says, understand what it means to be outside of Christ. The word in Christ it's used 164 times in the New Testament. And it is the ultimate expression of who you become when you come into, into Christ. Who you become as a Christian. The word Christian was not always used positively. It was used to criticize. It was used to undermine those who were following Christ. And they were called Christian to say they, they are little Christs. So, the Word Christian is not the best expression of who you are. The best expression is who you, of who you are as a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ are the words in Christ. You are a man in Christ. This is why 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Because the ultimate expression of who you have become in the Lord, when you accept the work that Jesus Christ has done, is the words in Christ. You are in Christ. That is your identity. That is your location. That's where you exist. So that the Bible tells us that in him we move and live and have our whole being. You are in Christ. But he says, remember that formerly you were called uncircumcised, that you were separate from Christ. Formerly our identity was that where we were separated from Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel. What is the citizenship of Israel he's talking about here? He's talking about the fact that Israel or the Jews were set apart by God as his own special people. But so before we came into Christ, we were excluded. They were the only ones who can say they are included into the inheritance of God. Hallelujah. But God, when he incorporated us in Christ, he grafted us in so that we are now participants into the commonwealth. So it says you were excluded from citizenship and you were foreigners to the covenants of the promise and you were without hope and without God. But now that you are in Christ, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near through the blood. You are not far from God. You are not far from the heart of the Father. You are not alone. You are not distant. You are not excluded. You are included. You have been brought in. The Bible says you are accepted in the beloved. He says you are without hope, without God in the world. But now, now in Christ Jesus, you were far away. You have been brought near through the blood. Through the blood. Verse 14. For he himself is our peace. Now, this part is going to be extremely important for us because it's going to bring into our attention the fact that when Christ died or when Christ appeared in the flesh, he operated in bringing two natures to exist as one. Let's continue and read and see this grace. Verse 14, For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier. 
You see, there was a barrier that set you aside. There was a barrier that kept you from participation. There was a barrier that kept you from experiencing the heart of the Father, the love of God, the peace of God. But he who is our peace, when he worked out his ways of salvation, he made the two become one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandment, commandments. So Jesus abolished in his flesh the law and its commandments and the regulations. In other words, what the Bible is speaking about when it says he abolished in his flesh the law and its commandments, it's speaking about the fact that without you fulfilling the law, you are never going to be accepted. So the Lord had to complete the law firstly, satisfy the law to the fullest. Legally, he was required to do so. So when he has done that, he abolished the law in his flesh. In other words, the work that he did in his flesh satisfied the law and suspended the law. It doesn't mean that God hated the law. It doesn't mean that God was not, was not working through the law to justify. No, it means that when Jesus Christ came, he qualified us by making sure that he satisfied the law. The law of God is fully satisfied in Christ and set aside, suspended. He abolished it in his body with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two. Now, when the Bible is speaking about the two, it's, it, it, it's in two levels. The first thing it's speaking about is speaking about the union of the Gentiles with the Jews. In other words, we are brought into the house of God. We are integrated into the house of God. We are made one with Israel. So that the commandments or the promises that were set out in the Old Testament, that were left out and, 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 and exclusively for the Israeli people, are now the commonwealth of the believers. We are now allowed to participate. So that is the first level. He, recon he reconciles the two, those who are without and those who are within. He makes them one in Christ. But secondly and most importantly, he, recon he reconciles the humanity of our weakness with the, the divinity of God's grace. Christ is fully God and fully man. When Jesus Christ came, he had to be born of a woman so that he is a human being. He fully had, he had all the qualities of a human being. He would be hungry. He would be tired. He would cry. He would have to grow. He had difficulties in his body because he was a human being. However, he was fully God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So that we come to understand that outside of the word of God, outside of Christ being God and him being made flesh, there is no divinity in the Christ. So he is divinity, he is divine because he is actually God himself. And he has come to live in a body, being God 100%, he came to live in the body and that work reconciles the two natures. He says, His purpose was to create in Himself one new man out of two, making peace. In other words, when you come into Christ, your humanity is engulfed by the divinity of God, so that the new man that is created is called a new creature. You don't die in the sense of the human life. You come human as you are, and your humanity is engulfed, is submerged, is integrated, interwoven with the divinity of Christ, so that you are called a new man. You're a new creature. Why are you a new creature? Because the kind of life that now masters your body is what we call eternal life. The kind of life that now flows in your body is not the same life that you had before. It's called eternal life. 
The eternal life of God has engulfed mortality. Immortality has engulfed mortality. Incorruption has engulfed corruption. Hallelujah. So he made the two one, destroying the barrier. He made peace. He made peace. He restored you to oneness with the Father. Why did Jesus Christ have to come? To reveal the Father to us. To reveal our proximity with the Father. To make you aware that you are close to the Father. You are not far. He brought you close because of his blood. You are brought close. You are reconciled with the Father. You are no longer alien. You are no longer excluded. You are included. You are no longer one who cannot be associated with the Godhead. No, you are part of him. You are in Christ. You know, that's one of the reasons that when you became a Christian or when Christ had died and incorporated in himself the church, we didn't, the, the, the Godhead did not become a, 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 fourth, a, a four a quadruple thing. It remained the Trinity because we are reconciled in Christ, united in Christ so that we are not separate. So when you say God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you have included the church because the church is in him, reconciled in one man. Whew, that's another teaching for another day. And in his body, one body, he reconciled them both to God through the cross. He's talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. By which he put to death their hostility. In other words, in the cross, Jesus Christ put to death the separation that existed between us and the people of God. Number two, the separation that existed between us and God. The wall of hostility. That thing that set you apart from God and could not allow you to participate. You know, the reason that when you are not born again, you can't pray to God and find answers is because there's a wall. There's a wall of hostility. You can't communicate with the Father because he doesn't recognize you as son outside of Christ. It is only in Christ that our humanity is united with his divinity. In Christ. He takes your humanity. That, that's the beauty of it. It's a mystery. It doesn't kill you. You don't die. You come as you are, as a human being, and he takes your humanity and unites it with his divinity. So that what you become is called a new creature. Hallelujah. You are a new creature. Let's continue. I want us to get somewhere here. Verse 17. He came and preached peace to you who were far and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So when Jesus Christ came, he also preached the same message of oneness to the Jews. They may have rejected it then, but they are still accepted and welcome to participate because he preached to those who were far and those who were near. And those who were near, we know, is the Jews because already they were chosen by God to be his people. So when Jesus Christ came and preached, he preached to them also. This is important as a Christian to understand because sometimes we ask ourselves, did God reject the Jewish people? Do we worship a Jewish God? Are we Zionists in nature? No, we are not, because Jesus Christ reconciles the nation of Israel, the chosen people of God, with those who will come to him through the gospel. He reconciles them into one, so that what they do from henceforth is by one spirit, under one God, under one name, Christ. Hallelujah. So it is not a God that was imposed to us as Africans. It is not about the fact that it came and was preached to us by a white man. No, the reality of the gospel is this. That Jesus Christ reconciled those who were far with those who were near. Jesus Christ removed the world of hostility that we had when we approached the Father. A white man is not the mediator of this thing. Jesus Christ himself is the mediator. Does it matter whether it was brown or yellow? or black, or white, it does not matter. What matters is the fact that divinity became humanity in order to reconcile all men in one. That's what matters. Hallelujah. 
I'm not a historian, but those who study history would tell us that probably the region where Jesus Christ existed and lived during his lifetime is a region in the Middle East. So it would have looked or maybe behaved or maybe practiced a kind of a lifestyle that is likened to the people of Palestine and the people of the Arab regions, you know. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. What matters is this. God became man. God became man. And in that union, he removes the wall of separation. In that union, he removes the penalty of your sin. In that union, he lifts up the veil. Hallelujah. So that we can see him and participate with him in Christ. Verse 19 says, Consequently, because of the work of the Lord, because of this unity of two in one, consequently, you are no longer foreigners or aliens. This is your reality. You are no longer foreigners or aliens, but you are fellow citizens with God's people. He's talking about the Israelites. We are fellow citizens. I love that. We are fellow citizens. In other words, hear this, church. In other words, you have no basis to still stand and say, the Jews are blessed by God, that's why they are rich. You too are involved. You too are accepted. You too are integrated. You too are citizens. So if you are living in poverty because you are not a Jew, you are in error. If you live in poverty because you are not a Jew, you are in error. The blessings of Abraham, the blessing that maketh one rich, is also extended to you by the reason of what Christ did on the cross. You are accepted. You are fellow citizens. I will live in wealth. I will see wealth. My hands will, my, will handle wealth. How can I say this with confidence? Am I basing it on my networks, on my connections, on who I know? No, I'm basing it on the word of God. I am a fellow citizen with the people of God. If God blessed Jacob and made him to enjoy and have wells that he could dig in the desert, and those wells produce water. The same blessing is upon me. By reason of being joined with Christ, the same blessing is upon me. Therefore, you, child of God, can experience the bountifulness of God's grace, not because of what you can do, because of what Jesus Christ did when he reconciled us to be one with the people of God. We also share in the promises of the people of God. We are members of God's household, he says. You are not only citizens, but you are members. We are built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, which Jesus Christ himself is the co chief cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. In other words, the apostles and the prophets, we are building the church up so that the church may rise until it is merged, until it reaches to the stature of Christ. That's what Ephesians chapter 4 says. It speaks of our mission to bring men into completion until they become unto the fullness of the Christ. Why must you become unto the fullness of the Christ? Because God chose you, reconciled you, you are members of his household. We, the apostles and the prophets, are the foundation building the church up until it reaches to the chief cornerstone, who is the Christ himself. He says, in him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. Let's read so that we can finish. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. In him, you too, who are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God himself lives by his spirit. It is important for the church to understand that the work of Jesus Christ is not primarily personal. The work of Jesus Christ is universal in nature. What am I saying? God in Christ is after his church prospering, is after his church existing as one in unity, in oneness. Hallelujah. 
God gave some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors for the equipping of the saints. So God has an emphasis on the church to be built up into one structure. One of the things that the Lord began to speak to me about was the fact that one of the things he is doing in these last days is to reconcile the ministry of the prophetic with the ministry of the apostolic because the two ministries must not exist outside of each other as separate. They must exist in oneness because it is the church that God is building and not individuals. So even in your life, he is not first your personal savior. He's first the savior of the entire world. He's not first after your prosperity. He's first after the prosperity of the whole world. So you don't stop preaching. You don't stop sharing the gospel. You don't stop speaking to your neighbor because just like the four leprous men, we found a bounty and we don't keep silent about it. Just like the Samaritan woman, we go out into our nations, we go out into our community and we say to them, come see a man who has reconciled me back to God. Come see a man who has made me one with the Father. Come see a man who joined me with the people of God. Glory. The Lord keep you and bless you. And encourage. I pray that he increases you. That your knowledge of him may expand daily. That you may come to know who you are in him. That you may come to embrace the reality of what he has done for you in Christ. These things are yours. They are free and they are yours. I love you eternally in Christ. Amen.